Thank you for renting from Easy Camper Rental. My name is Micah Foster and I am the owner of Easy Camper Rental and this is a walkthrough of the Gulfstream 248BH 24 foot bunkhouse. It is a 24 foot box length and a 27 foot total length. Three days prior to your pickup date, you will receive an email with online documents to sign. Once you have signed and finalized those documents, you will receive a final email with the exact pickup location which you chose and a code for the lockbox for the keys. The drop-off location will be the same as a pickup location unless otherwise agreed. Please return the camper clean inside and outside unless the Easy Clean add-on has been selected, which can be selected at any time. A couple notes, just please treat this equipment as your own. Second thing is always think 10 feet above you and 30 feet behind you. Uh, the most damaged item on these is the roof and the awning and generally that's from trees um, and a lot of times from park strip trees at your home so just be very aware that these are taller and that you can hit trees with them and then think 30 feet behind you because you will need to take corners wider so you do not hit curbs and you need to think about how steep the angle is going in and out of say a gas station or or wherever you're going so you do not um, hit and break maybe a stabilizer jack or something like that. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, do a video of hooking up the trailer and then we'll do a walk around out the outside and then the inside and then wrap up. When you arrive at the pickup location the trailer will be ready but it will be locked up. So you will come to the front of the trailer and there'll be a lock box for the keys on top of the battery cover. You'll put the code that you'll get in the email and you will unlock the lock box and you'll get the keys there should be three keys one will be for the storage doors on the outside of the trailer one will be for the main door of the trailer and the other will be for the coupler lock the coupler lock will be right here simply enough that you just put the key in you twist it and it slides off and again when you go to lock it up when you return it's just the opposite of that now we will go ahead and hook up the trailer. Hooking up the trailer to the tow vehicle is fairly simple. We do provide an adjustable hitch. Obviously you can use your own if you have one. Just remember it is a two and five sixteenth inch ball, which is the larger of the two. As you can see, you can use the L to go up uh, for lower tow vehicles or the L to go down in a drop for lower tow vehicles. If you do have a lower tow vehicle, definitely want to go up and the reason why is because it will drag on the ground if you go through like a steep incline entryway like to a gas station for example. So the first thing you want to do is put the hitch on your tow vehicle. You want to get a tape measure which we provide one in the cabinet above the sink and you're going to measure from the ground to the top of the ball on the hitch 21 inches. Now that's going to get you close to a level toe. Sometimes it's impossible to get exactly 21 inches, so you want to just get close. Always remember that you do want to get a level toe, but a little tongue down is better than a little tongue up. Because sometimes it's impossible to get exactly level. So you want to do that first, and then you want to back your tow vehicle with the ball underneath the coupler. Now it does need to be spot on because you can move this tongue around. That's kind of nice about these smaller trailers. But you want to be pretty close. And then you'll go ahead and you'll lower it down. you have jacked it all the way down, you'll go ahead and pull this pin out and you will slide the lock into place and then you'll put the pin back in. Now sometimes what might happen is you might have the ball too far back in the coupler and then you can't get this slide to lock in. Usually what you can do is just pull forward a little bit and the lock will seat the ball into the coupler and then you can slide it. Um, if that doesn't work then you're probably going to have to jack it up and then adjust it and go back down. Now, um, again from here what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll put the chains on. So if these chains are too long, you can twist them 
to make them shorter. You want to put, hook up both sides. And then you want to hook up this cable, which is the trailer brake breakaway cable. This is if everything else fails, the trailer comes off the tow vehicle, will lock the brakes on the trailer. Now, if you can't hook this independently to a tow hook, then you can hook it to the chain if you need to. And then from here, you're going to hook up the seven-way connection. If you don't have a seven-way, you only have a four-way, then there is an adapter in the cabinet above the sink, and you can use that adapter. In a four-way, it's only going to run your lights. It's not going to do anything else. So the seven-way is better. Now, if you are renting the Bluetooth trailer brake controller, there is a link to how to operate it in the description of this video. Then you will connect the seven-way to this, and then this to the tow vehicle. So you'll want to take this block with you. Do not burn it. Um, you can just put it in your tow vehicle, put it in the storage area, because it makes it a lot easier to just jack it down, up and down on this block, instead of having to go all the way to the ground. So now we'll go ahead and go around the outside of the trailer, and then go from there. For the outside of the trailer, I'll just show you the storage area first. This is a path-through storage area. You cannot get to this. Uh, underneath the bed like some trailers so you do have to get to it from this door or the door on the other side um, in here you will have the adjustable hitch you'll have the crank for the stabilizing jacks you'll have some chalks the orange things sometimes they're yellow uh, will be uh, leveling blocks from side to side so what you'll do is you will level the trailer from front to back with the tongue jack and then if you need to level it from side to side, you put those on one side of the trailer underneath the wheels and pull the trailer up on it uh, to get it higher. Um, there is a level inside the trailer in the cabinet above the sink, and you can use that to help you. Uh, you do have a fresh water hose. It has a pressure regulator on it. You will use that pressure regulator if you're hooked up to city water like in an RV camp. Um, if you need to put water in the fresh water tank, you can take that uh, pressure rate regulator off so it flows faster. And then this container has your sewer hoses. We do dump the tanks for you so you don't need to do that. But if you need to, for whatever reason, on your uh, vacation, you can do that. And there is a video, uh, the QR code inside the bathroom that you can scan. And it's also in the description of this video. So that's what's in the storage area. Going around the rest, you do have your propane tanks here. Now there will be a cover on these propane tanks. It'll be a hard plastic cover, or it'll be like a soft cover. The hard plastic cover will have a door on the top, and the uh, softer cover will have a zipper on it to be able to access this area. So the dual propane tanks, um, this is 14 gallons of propane, so it can gonna last you a long, long time unless there's a, a real issue. And then the regulator here has a crossover switch, so um, whatever one it's pointed at, that's where the tank is going to pull propane from. So if you do, for whatever reason, run out of propane, then you can flip it to the other side. And then you can see down here, uh, see it's, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's red. It goes uh, clear if there's propane in there. Uh, flowing <clears throat> and so that's how you get to the propane tanks you do have dual six volt batteries for longevity on here uh, just remember that the fridge does on this trailer does run off of the batteries it doesn't have a propane mode uh, so uh, depending on if you're using the fridge and what performance level you've got it on uh, it, it may you may need a generator to charge those batteries or an electrical source. Everything in the trailer will run off the batteries or the propane, except for the microwave, the AC, and then there's some 120 volt outlets. Those three things will need an electrical source, either a generator or a uh, electrical plug-in, a 30 amp plug-in. The everything can run off of 15 amp, except for the AC. It has to have 30 amp or 3,500 watts. So for us, it would need, uh, if you're doing a rental generator, you'd need dual generator set up. Um, so a single generator won't run the AC, but it will run everything else. So we go around the side. Here is the other door here uh, to the storage area. You've got your uh, exhaust for the heater. 
and then this is the uh, 30 amp cord so this will actually be in the storage area too um, we've got it nice and neat uh, curled up uh, with these um, ties just when you put it back don't wad it, wad it up and throw it in there just please wrap it around and then put these ties on I just wanted to show you how it goes on here so these can be a little finicky so just be patient here um, but you push it in and then you can see you twist it to lock it and then there's uh, this ring here that you tighten it um, this sometimes is really hard to catch I'm not sure why but um, you really don't have to you know get it really super snug on there um, but just again just be patient so you don't cross thread it you've got your city water connection right here so that's if you have like in an RV camp you've got a connection to city water you have your dump here so uh, black is your toilet and gray are your is your sinks and shower and so just always remember that so you don't pull the wrong one if you are dumping them you do have your stabilizing jacks it has four stabilizing jacks again these are stabilizing jacks these are not leveling jacks so you get the trailer level front to back with the tongue and then side to side with the leveling blocks and then you put these down snug to the ground um, and that just helps stabilize as you're walking around it's not as wobbly you've got your spare tire here it's always good to bring extra tools with you um, really in any situation uh, in case a tire does go flat or something like that it's rare but it does happen you pick up nail or something um, so just uh, keep some spare tools you you will need um, probably like a breaker bar to get the lug nuts off there they're pretty tight and uh, so just you know, have some extra tools on you here is the fresh water tank fill again you'll fill this up if you need to um, and then it, we will fill it if you've indicated that you wanted to on the reservation um, you can refill it if you need to here and then when you want to drain it uh, there is a drain right there and so if you're like done and you just want the out you can just flip that and drive because it's just fresh water you've got your water heater here you won't need to do anything with that on the outside because there is a switch on the inside that lights that it's a automatic here's another storage area it's not very big so don't expect to fit much in there but this is underneath the rear bunk and you can actually access this from inside the trailer too so uh, you do have uh, 120 volt outlets here again they only work if you have 120 volt service available so electricity or a generator you do have a grab handle here these get easily broken so if you you really don't need them the kids like to hang on them break them pretty easily and so if you don't need it I would just recommend not flipping it open you can flip it by just pulling up on it and then you can flip it against the trailer you can also flip it against the door if you're traveling um, I always lock the deadbolt on the door when I'm traveling so it doesn't come open um, but sometimes people flip that against the, the, the door so just in case you know it does come open you got your stairs that will fold up and so that's it for the outside we'll go ahead and go on the inside on the inside here the first thing I wanted to show you is the control panel which is immediately to your left as you walk in so there's a lot of buttons on here and I'll just go through it everything. So this you can check your level. So if you push the button, the lights will light off. That, that gives you the level of the batteries, of the fresh water tank, the black water tank, which again is just the toilet. Then you have two for the gray. Uh, this only has one gray tank, uh, but these are universal access panels. So I don't know which one they wired and every trailer sometimes is different. Sometimes they'll wire it to two sometimes one. So one will always read empty or should read empty. And then the other one um, will, will be the one that fills. So just watch it as it fills. There is a, a fail safe on the gray water tank. It'll actually backfill into the bathtub. And so if that starts backfilling into the back bathtub, that means you filled up your gray water tank. Uh, you can fill up the gray water tank really fast by showers. Uh, just know that you do have limited use on how much gray water goes into a tank. You also have limited use on how much you have to put into that. And so make the showers fast. It's best to just do like a military style. Just get in, 
get wet, turn it off, uh, soap up, turn it back on, rinse off, turn it off. And so just really fast, you're not gonna be able to take long, long showers. The next thing here is we've got the awning. So you've got retract and extend. Now you can roll an awning up backwards. So if you hold extend down, it'll go all the way out and then it will roll up backwards. Generally, you know it's rolled up backwards because the awning on the outside will be white when it's rolled up instead of black uh, because the underside of the awning fabric is white. And so just try not to roll it up backwards. Just you know, hold, uh, retract, and extend the, the way you need to. Uh, the other thing is, as you can see here, we've got notes here, is awnings are the number one broken thing. Uh, a lot of that reason is because of wind. So if you are not at the trailer, ex you retract the awning. If you are not using the awning, retract the awning. If there's any wind, retract the awning. It doesn't matter if your whole life you've always had a trailer and you've left the awning out forever it they will break i can promise you that right now so and it's not a good situation for anyone involved it's very expensive and very time consuming and so please just take care of the awning and retract it if you are not using it or in any inclement weather the other thing we've got here like i said you got your water heater very easy you just flip this switch and uh, it'll turn on by itself It'll try three times the light, and if it doesn't light, then it will fault. So you have to turn it on, turn it back on. Uh, you've also got your water pump here. Again, another thing that the best way to do it is you turn the water pump on, you use the water you need to use, and you turn the water pump off. It is an on-demand water pump. And so, for example, if you left and you left the water pump on and something broke, then it's just going to keep pumping water until it runs out of water. So it's going to flood the trailer. Um, so don't do that just turn on the water pump use the water turn it off again there's a note here for that too um, also going back to the black water and gray water tanks especially the black water tank just due to debris sometimes a lot of times actually they don't read correctly um, i promise you it is empty when you do get it but Debris can get on those sensors and it could say it's two thirds full when it's empty or it can say it's full when it's empty. Um, and so just note that, that sometimes those just don't work. Uh, you do have your switches for your light. So outside light, inside light. Um, so I've got all the lights on right now, but uh, the inside light will turn on though. The switch will turn you know, these ones on here. All the other ones like that one under by the sink, um, those turn on with a button. So uh, there's just a button right here that you click and you can turn it on and off. So that's all the switches on the control panel. Um, one kind of pro tip I wanted to go over with you really quick is the stove here. Um, so what I do is that uh, before I light any other propane appliances, I light the stove top first. The reason why is that you um, there's air in the propane lines, and so you need to purge that air out first. And the fastest way to do that is through the stove. So you got to make sure that the propane tanks are on outside, and then you go ahead. There, there's a barbecue stick lighter for this um, in the cabinet above the sink, so I'll show you those items later. But you'll go ahead and turn these on. You will hear air flowing through there. Um, and then you'll eventually smell the propane, but you just want to be careful when you do this Maybe just do one one burner at a time But you'll light it with the the stick lighter or a match whatever you need to do to, to light it um, So that way you've got propane flowing through the lines And then it's a lot faster and easier to light all the other propane appliances like the water heater for example So that's a good pro tip there uh, The sleeping areas here. So you have the queen bed up here and then just know that this is a mattress protector this is not a sheet so you're not supposed to sleep on top of the mattress protector please bring a sheet or a blanket or anything just to put over the top of that and then sleep on top of that don't sleep on the mattress protector again it's not the end of the world if you need to like you forgot but again it's not the most comfortable either because it is a mattress protector not a sheet you can get to some storage underneath here. So again, that's not the pass-through storage, that's different storage. 
and the pass-through storage you cannot get to from the inside. You do have a, a broom here. You've got some hooks. Uh, the USB connections here will work. Uh, you know, they'll charge off the batteries. Those 120 volt, again, you need an electrical source, plug-in, or uh, a generator. Again, you got some on this side too. The other sleeping areas, uh, this is the dinette, but it can be made down into a bed. It is very important that you just be careful with this. So uh, these legs will come off, so you just lift it out and then take the legs off. And then you will take this table part and this little ledge right here on both sides, so this side and this side, is where you will put the table. Now it's really snug in there, so just be patient and uh, get it in there flat because you don't want it cockeyed because then if you sit down on it and one side is say like resting up here on this instead of down here on this edge then it's going to break this or it's going to break the table. Uh, so just be very careful with that but again this does make down into a bed so you put that table down and then you push all the uh, cushions together flat because uh, these come off and then this pushes together and uh, so you can make a, a bed out of that. You do have your bunks back here. So really good size bunks. They're about full size bed. Uh, the mattresses are non-standard. So it's close to a full size, not exactly a full size. Um, and then also since they are non-standard, these are very expensive mattresses to replace. So again, if you have a child that has the possibility of maybe um, urinating on accident. I mean, as parents, we all know how that goes. Uh, just make sure that you've got these covered up and, you know, with blankets or whatever you need to do or the kid is taken care of so that doesn't happen because these are very expensive mattresses here. The kitchen area next. So you've got a double sink. Again, this is plastic, so do not put anything hot in this sink. You've got a paper towel holder right here. Um, and then you've got your two burner stove top, which I just showed you. You've got a range hood, so there is a light and there is a fan on this. Uh, you've got your microwave here. The microwave works just pretty much like any other microwave. You've got your fridge. So this fridge just runs off of uh, the batteries. Um, and then if you have a you know electrical source that will charge the batteries at the same time, but it does run off the batteries. So you pull the latch open here and you've got your freezer and you've got your settings for your freezer right there. Min, ma uh, min mid and max. I recommend that you just set it to kind of where it is right now, about two thirds. If you set it to max, it's not gonna cool down any faster. It's just eventually gonna get super frozen in there and take up a lot of your batteries. Same thing here is that you've got uh, these buttons here. You've got performance, silent, and eco. So to turn this on, you hold down this button for three seconds. It turns on and then you've got, again, you can click it again for silent, eco, performance. And then from here, if you're on eco, then it's automatically just gonna set it to one. On silent, you can change it, but you probably don't wanna go above three. And then performance, you can go all the way up to five. And then again, it's not necessarily gonna cool it down faster. It's just going to get a lot colder. So really the best is probably just depending on how much battery level, how much uh, ability you have to charge the batteries um, while either you're driving um, or with a generator or uh, electrical connection, uh, depending on which uh, setting you want to put that in. So again, to turn it off, you just hold it down for three seconds and it will turn off. And then we have this sink area here with a medicine cabinet. So here's another sink. Again, don't put anything hot in here. It will melt this plastic. We do back here by the sink, we do have uh, the thermostat for the heater. So 
it actually blows out right here but the thermostat is back here and again this is a thermostat not a temperature gauge so uh, if you crank it all the way up to 90 it's not going to heat up any faster it'll just eventually get so hot it'll probably trip the heater and shut it off and so to turn this on there's this right here, this um, switch right here and it's really stiff so sometimes I feel like you're almost going to break it but it goes to the left and you just pull it and it will pop and then you slide the bottom to the desired temperature so you can see up here and then you can see the slide down here so you just slide it to wherever you want it to go now to turn it off you slide it back all the way and then you push this back to the right and that will turn it off if you do for some reason do trip the heater uh, you can get to the switch on the heater. You got to take those two screws out. Unfortunately, it is on the back side of the heater. Or not the back, back side. It's on the top, but it's towards the back. Um, and there's just a switch that resets it in, in case that happens. That's really rare, though. Um, another thing that can happen, uh, you know, they use these Dometic heaters are used in like 70% of trailers, no matter how cheap or expensive this is the heater you get and so they do have an well they someone designed a heater without a fern or without a filter so sometimes they can get kind of gummed up and there's an issue it's called a sail switch issue and there is a video on how to fix that in the description of this video if that does happen again it's rare but what will happen the telltale sign is that you'll turn the thermostat on uh, you've got the propane on, like everything's the way it should be. You'll turn it on, it'll blow for like 30 seconds, 20, 30 seconds, and then it will just shut off. And what's happening, that's the, the sail switch just isn't opening. Usually it just gets uh, dirty or something like that, and then it just needs to be cleaned. Again, there is a video of how to do that in the description. It's pretty simple, but most likely that's not going to happen. Uh, just, But just want you to know in case it does. So the uh, last thing to note here is just the bathroom. So it's kind of odd. They put the switch for the lights on the outside of the bathroom and it actually controls uh, this light and then it controls the light uh, inside here. And then you do have a fan which uh, uh, with an electric fan up there. So that's kind of nice. But just weird they put the switch on the outside of the bathroom. but. Either way, um, it is what it is. And so you've got your toilet here with your foot flush. Um, again, you just, you wanna be careful when you're using any RV trailer is that uh, you wanna make sure that the liquid waste is flushing down the solid waste because they can get clogged fairly easily. Again, it has nothing to do with this trailer. It's just how uh, RVs, all of them are. Um, there is, a video on how to unclog or dump the tanks right there if you scan that it's also in the description of this video and you can go ahead and dump those or unclog it most of the time it's clogged if it's full it's not full full um, but whatever you need to do again that's usually just washing it out uh, or you know helping it its way down there's extra toilet paper in there um, you've got your bath tub with a shower head here again uh, the, this bathtub will backfill if you filled up the gray water tank um, and again black water is the toilet gray water is the sink and shower and so if you filled it up it will start backfilling into this and and that's how you know that you've definitely filled up the gray water tank um, even if the sensors maybe aren't working and uh, uh, this works just like pretty much any other bathtub or, or shower here You've got your curtain here. We just tie it up in a knot. You can untie it just to keep it up out of water um, as we clean them. And then you've got a couple hooks up here for towels. So that's uh, it for the inside. Um, and then we will go outside and wrap up. A couple things before we wrap up. Uh, the first is the AC. Uh, just know that the trailer, everything can be run off of the batteries or the propane except for the microwave, the AC, and the 120 volt outlets. The AC pulls a lot of watts, so you need a generator or a dual rental generator set up that's 3500 watts or more to run the AC off of generator. 
um, or you need a 30 amp connection. If you connect it to a 15 amp connection, say at like your house, it is very likely going to trip the breaker. Sometimes you can get away with it, like sometimes it will work. If you have nothing else operating off that breaker and that breaker is in really good condition, it, it can work, but I just can't guarantee it. Most of the time you do need a 30 amp connection. So just know that with the AC, it's a lot of watts. Uh, so to run that, uh, just disregard the heating portion. This doesn't have the heating element in it because there is a heater in this trailer. Um, but you can, what you'll do is you'll just set, you know, this is how high you want the fan on the cool side. Uh, this is just a fan fan if you just want a fan. Um, and then you'll set it to how cold you want it. And then you will set the vents here so you've got vents like this on all four sides um, if you want it to just go straight down you can do that one so that's the first thing the last thing here is that in the cabinet above the sink there will be an instruction manual in here uh, that will in case you don't have access to this video and you need to look up on how to do something it comes from the point of view of someone who has never used a trailer before so it's got screenshots of something we make so that's available in here and then you've also got uh, this here which has got all sorts of items in it that you might need so right here you have some barbecue stick lighters you've got a reducer hitch and so the shank on the uh, included Adjustable hitch is a two inch shank, but if you have a two and a half inch uh, receiver, like on a heavy duty truck, then you'll use this to reduce it so you can use that rental adjustable hitch. You, you have your tape measure here. You have your level here to help you level from side to side and back to front. Again, side to side with the leveling blocks, back to front with the uh, tongue jack. You've got some testers, so you've got a seven-way tester, and then there is a four-way tester buried in there somewhere. Because um, what happens is we test all the trailers before we stage them, so we know they all work. Sometimes people get there and they say, oh, the light doesn't work or something like this. 99% of the time, it's with the tow vehicle uh, for whatever reason. A lot of times, maybe a fuse is burnt out. I've had people pick them up with brand new trucks, and they've there's an issue with the truck. Those things do happen. It's best to get that tested prior to picking up the trailer so you know truck is good. Um, but you can use this. You can plug it in and then it'll tell you, you know, if your uh, marker lights, left turn, right turn, back up, break, all that stuff. It'll, it'll test it for you. Um, and then you've got, uh, for some reason, if your seven-way isn't working or you don't have one, this is a seven-way down to a, a four-way connection. Um, most likely you don't really want to use that unless you're in a jam because that four-way only uh, works with the, the lights and then you've got a 30 amp to 15 amp converter so if you're never going to need any th uh, 30 amp and you've only got a 15 amp connection or you're just trying to like charge the batteries or or something like that then you can use that you can connect that to the to the cord the 30 amp cord and then plug it into a 15 amp so and now we'll go ahead and wrap up thank you again for renting from easy camper rental I really appreciate your business this is a small family owned business and this is how I support my family so I really do appreciate it I've worked on the craft of hospitality for many many years and I hope it shows through in here and I really hope that you enjoy your vacation and please remember to return the camper clean inside and outside unless easy clean add-on was selected. You will receive a text the morning of drop-off and if possible please text back a couple hours before drop-off so we can plan logistics. Upon drop-off please call or text and let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Please let us know if there are any maintenance items that may need to be addressed. We meticulously maintain these campers, but they aren't built super durable, so we don't charge for maintenance items like other, uh, like others do. That concludes the walkthrough. Safe travels. Enjoy your vacation, and remember to be the happiest camper.